Illinois, statement win, program win. Suddenly, this season has a chance, Cart. Like some some good things could happen this season for Illinois football. Good things are already happening. 23 to 7 win over a ranked team at home against the Kansas Jayhawks. Uh Jalen Daniels. Pretty bad in this game. Three interceptions. Now, Illinois, I thought, did a phenomenal job defensively on him, making things tough. A couple of those picks that they made were like, wow, top 10 nominee type picks. There was just some really opportunistic and really pivotal game-changing plays from the Illinois defense in this game. Offensively, uh, you had Fagan get you a touchdown, only 40 yards on 16 carries, but he, he took on the volume of a bell cow. Luke Altmeyer. Kind of doing his Luke Altmeyer thing. Uh just just managed this game. Did not hurt Illinois whatsoever. Zakari Franklin heard my criticisms after week one. I said you need something from him. He spit out a nine reception, 99 yard game. Pat Bryant had a couple wow moments yet again, three receptions for 70 yards. But uh to me, all in all, this was a statement win led by the Illinois defense. And just some really clutch moments in a juiced up, orange out night game environment. Uh, and it was a well earned victory for the Illini. What'd you see? Yeah, it, I mean, it was a, a, a crazy environment, first of all. Like that place was really, really rocking. Like the orange out was uh, in full effect. Uh, the energy in the stadium, you could feel it just watching it on TV. It looked absolutely incredible. And I, I think you really kind of sum this game up in, in short here. Luke Altmeyer made the big plays. And I say, and when I say big plays, that doesn't necessarily mean he made touchdown passes or like, you know, some out of body like type, you know, passes or anything like that. I just think when it came down to making that throw and his receivers making that catch to extend a drive or something like that, they were able to make that. And this is no disrespect to Luke Altmeyer, but the first thing I'm going to look to when I'm looking at his stat line or looking at him in games is interceptions, right? If he takes, he took care of the ball in this game, Jalen Daniels did not take care of the ball. And that's why Illinois won the football game. They uh, Jalen Daniels, whether, and I'm a, I'm a massive Jalen Daniels fan. And part of it was like the Illinois defensive line had Kansas's defensive line in hell. Jalen Daniels was getting, I mean, the defense in general, I thought the defensive line played great for Illinois. The defensive backs for Illinois were really, really good on the receivers because, you know, Kansas does have some really good receivers. Arnold, Skinner, they got a lot of weapons. And they were able to negate those guys. And they were able to force turnovers in this game. And then they just, they they made enough plays. Like Fagan made enough plays, scored the touchdown. Uh, they had the defense score touchdown with the pick six. Um, they... They were able to just make a few more plays while taking care of the ball and playing great defense. This was a this was a really, really good win for Illinois and, and one that makes me feel a lot better about Illinois football too, given that yeah. this point of the season. Yeah, I was just really, really, really wowed by the Illinois defense. Um they were bro, they were flying. They were everywhere. They were literally everywhere. They were, I think, and, and honestly, like statistically, you look at the box score at the end of this game, and I don't think there was necessarily anything crazy impressive other than I, I thought Illinois did a great job on Kansas's passing attack because we know from Kansas in the last couple seasons, like they are most dangerous when they're hitting big plays through the air and then it opens up the run. But whether it was Jalen Daniels or Jason Bean last season, like Kansas's best games usually included some big play moments. And this game really didn't include many big play moments. They only threw for 141 yards to the air in general. I thought it was uh, a, a really impressive, complete effort from the Illinois defense from the secondary through the, the middle level to the, the ability to contain Jalen Daniels, the ability to get pressure on him from time to time. Like it, it was just a really sound game plan and really sound execution. Outside of that, like, I mean, Kansas did have success running the football. They ran for 5.6 yards per carry. So, like, I don't want to say it was a dominant defensive performance because if not for the very opportunistic big play defensive moments forcing turnovers, I do think it felt like Kansas was sort of controlling the game. Like at least uh, on the ground when they stick stuck to it, they were having success with it in a way that um, 
in my opinion, Illinois offense didn't really find much of success with anything other than finding Zakari Franklin consistently and Luke Altmaier making some timely throws. Like they weren't torching them through the air and Illinois couldn't really run the football. They won this game because of the big momentous swings that their defense made. And uh, the biggest one by far was the pick six before half. Now I'm going to have some words for Jalen Daniels, performance here in just a minute. Um, but that that is one you absolutely cannot make if you are a quarterback of a top 25 team. Like you just that that's a season altering mistake. And I think everyone in that building would have been happy to just kind of run the clock out, get to halftime. Kansas had, uh, I believe, what was that at that point? A seven point lead? No, a six point lead. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it was 10 to what was the score there? 10 to six, four point lead. And then Illinois. Mm-hmm. Picks, picks that pass off right before half, runs it back to the house. It was an incredible play, but it was also an incredibly stupid play by Ellen, or by by Daniels. Like, you just shouldn't throw that ball whatsoever. Uh, Xavier Scott with the interception return, so shout out to him. Huge play. But I don't know, man. I just I look at Jalen Daniels' line at the end of this. I guess I'll get to my point on this. Um, Jalen Daniels has the reputation as one of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the country. I think it's well-earned who he's been through. His career was special in this game. In particular, he finishes 18 for 32, 141 yards passing three interceptions to two touchdowns. Uh, He also had a fumble on the final play of the game, basically trying to make something happen as time expired. So he turns it over four times. Three of those four turnovers happened in Illinois territory. Like those were drive killers. And the fourth one was the pick six. So, I I mean, you want the story of the game in a game, you end up losing by one possession. Like if you just kick field goals on a couple of those turnovers in Illinois territory, it's a completely different game. If you just don't throw a pick six and again, Illinois defense earned this. So I don't want to say they, they didn't, but to my eye, like the Jalen Daniels we watched in this game is not the Jalen Daniels we watched for all of 2022. Uh, and, and I think it's fair to question at this point. Like he hasn't played a lot of football, man. He only played three games in 2023 at all, dealing with injuries. And then he comes back at his debut. We weren't even sure how healthy he was go- he was going to be. Against Lindenwood, they didn't let him run the ball. He had zero rushing attempts. He goes nine for 15 through the air. I'm not saying he's banged up and that's what happened, but this is a guy who clearly showed some rust to me from the guy who he was two years ago. Just a guy who who was not ready for this moment to go on the road against a, a legitimately good Illinois defense and win you a football game the way he used to be able to years ago. Right. And it, and I think the main point or, or or how I would piggyback off what you said is that Illinois is a good football team, right? You cannot go on the road against a good football team that you beat last year, by the way, who has revenge on the mind and throw three picks and expect to win the football game. Yeah. They, that, it's just not, that's just not the way it works. You cannot do that. And credit to Illinois for taking advantage of it. Right. Like I think that they, there were some, the interceptions were very timely um, at moments where it looked like Kansas might even still eke out this football game. They were able to make some plays defensively, and Jalen Daniels, uh, he hurt his team in this game. And it, it is something that I'm just like, is he like, is he the same? Is he still rusty? Like, it was Jason Bean who was at the helm a lot of the games last year. Um, and he was actually really serviceable as a backup for Kansas. And uh, I don't know, Jalen, Dan- I've watched a lot of Jalen Daniels with Kansas in his time when he's healthy. And that's just not what he does. And, yeah. and I'm not t- trying to take away credit from Illinois here, because I think that they they had pressure on him. They were in his face. And they made the plays and made the interceptions when they had to be made. But yeah. Jalen Daniels, I, I, he he looked awful. Like, for lack of a better term, he looked awful. Yeah. I mean, just mistakes everywhere. And, again, I thought they were forced mistakes for the most part. But uh, the, they're mistakes I would expect to be forced on a guy who's, like, the 100th best quarterback in the sport. Not a guy who is widely considered a top five to ten talent at the position. Uh, he he just didn't deliver like that. And Kansas has to pay the price for that. Um, so speaking of the opportunistic Illinois defense, now that we're sitting here at the end of week two, Illinois has forced four turnovers in both games. And I remember back in the preview for the Eastern Illinois game when I was trying to gas up Eastern Illinois' chances to make it a game against Illinois. I talked about how Eastern Illinois was really great with turnover margin the season before. 
And how turnover margin is scary to me because I think a lot of times it's luck dependent. It doesn't necessarily signal meaningful things about your football team if your team is constantly winning the turnover battle. Now, it can sometimes do that. It can. It can signal a schematic approach, Illinois being very, very skilled, just very aggressive. But in general, there's some luck with turnovers to me. Illinois has four turnovers forced in both games. They've only coughed it up once themselves. It was Zakari Franklin's fumble in this game. Eight to one turnovers going Illinois' way through two weeks. Is that something that's going to continue? Or is this a sign that maybe maybe they're hot right now and when the turnovers stop swinging in their favor, things could change? So I I, I don't think that this is going to be like a trend. They're just going to force all these turnovers every single game. But also that might be okay because I think that when it comes down to it, I think Luke Altmaier actually can win them football games. And I think they got receivers that can make plays that can win them football games. And I think the defense is good enough overall. Um, so it, it'll be interesting. And I got to look at the rest of their schedule. I know they got central coming in next week. I think it is, but it will be very interesting to see, you know, what this looks like when they don't force turnovers, right. Or, maybe the quarterback needs to make a couple more plays against a good football team and not just be the game manager. Like can Luke Altmaier win them a game against a good team? And I'm not trying to take away the fact that he he didn't in this game. Cause I think he did an incredible job. He did what he had to do. He didn't, he did not turn the ball over except the fun. Was that fumble? He did have a fumble in this game though that he lost. No, it was Zakari Franklin. Was it Zakari Franklin? Okay. But yep. yeah, you got it. As long as he takes care of the ball, it's really all I think Illinois can ask for the court from their quarterback. Yeah, on paper, I agree. Um, I think that Luke Altmaier can win you games against teams that are as good or worse than you. I guess my question is, could, could Luke Altmaier go win you a game against a better football team? Because I, I think the Illinois defense is clearly, they want to win games with defensive stellar play. And then just manage, manage the game, Altmaier, try to get going on the ground. If Fagan can't run, then we're going to need some big moments from Pat Bryan and Zakari Franklin. Um, I don't know. I guess what I'm just saying in summary is I, I still don't really trust the Illinois offense. Like the story of this game to me was the Illinois defense and how they they forced the turnovers and just had big plays and big stops in general. Uh, now, offensively, I do want to give them credit. Super clutch. Because you were sitting there in the fourth quarter down 17-13 and you get a five-minute drive starting at your own 20 where Luke Altmaier converts a second and 17 with an 18-yard run, a second and seven with a 37-yard pass to Pat Bryant, a third and 10 with a with a 28-yard pass to Pat Bryant down to the goal line. Like it, Altmaier made the plays when it mattered on that drive to win the game. And then you followed that up, so you had a great drive. Eight plays, 80 yards, four-minute drive. Then you force Kansas into a three and out. Then with a three-point lead, you rattle off a six-and-a-half-minute drive, 15 plays to get another field goal to make it a two-score game. Like, I just – I was really impressed with the timeliness of their two good offensive drives in this game. Now, it would help if they had more than two good offensive drives, which they didn't, but they saved the best for last. But I, I don't know. It's one of those things where I think, like, Illinois can win games against – Good football teams. Clearly, Kansas is a good football team. But it's going to take opportunistic moments from the defense. It's going to take kind of griming it, like dra drag it into the mud a little bit. And if you can drag Kansas's offense into the mud, you can probably drag a lot of teams into the mud. That's reason for real hope. But um, I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, almost given the way Jalen Daniels was flipping that, the turnovers, kind of would have liked to see Illinois create more separation here because I thought the door was open for Illinois to win this by like 14 points with how Jalen Daniels was playing. Yeah, it, it, it could have been. They had every, I think, opportunity to, to route them, honestly, with all the picks they were throwing. Yeah. So they got Central Michigan next, then at Nebraska, at Penn State. That's the big, big two game stretch to kick off Big Ten play. Uh, we are obviously going to preview these games as time moves on, but. I guess looking ahead after you get this Kansas win under your belt, you expect to beat Central Michigan at home. What's successful through five games to you? Is it just three and two? You lose the two road games, you're not sweating it? Or is it is it now like we got to steal one of those? We should be four and one through five. I'm greedy. I'm greedy. greedy. They, they got to they steal one of those road games. 
Which one is more stealable? Riola at Nebraska or Drew Aller at Penn State, both on the road in tough environments? I'm going to still say at Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I think that's, I think that's the one. Are you putting – like if we were tearing up Illinois football in the Big Ten right now, I think last week they were in the have has your attention category. Are you putting them in the mix for like should make a bowl game right now, given where this started, or where are you at with them? I think should make a bowl game is should be the goal. Yeah. Okay. All right. Impressive win. Can I get a, a hearty ILL from you right now? ILL. I and I. Football season is here. Money is out there to be had in the form of winning bets. And our friends at my book, you want to make it easy for you to do just that. Yeah. And coming into football season, you're going to have games all weekend happening everywhere. And Gregory, where is the only place that Sleepers Media places all bets? I can tell you right now, since last February, February 1st to be exact, my bookie is the only place that I have placed a sports bet. I love my bookie. They make it easy. They get you quick payouts. They have awesome promo offers. In fact, card, they've got one right now that football fans everywhere and listeners of this show are going to want to take advantage of. Yeah, using promo code sleepers, that's promo code sleepers, you can take advantage of a 50% instant deposit bonus right now. That's 50% instant deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars over at my bookie use promo code sleepers and happy betting home dogs aren't dogs they're wolves i'm trying to flip that into like sport like home sports books aren't books they're novels we'll work on it that didn't work go my bookie promo code sleepers